Hey YouTube, this is Mega Dweezil coming at you from the Great Indiana Wilderness, and we're going to revisit a topic today that uh, is near and dear to my heart, that being bag rope. Okay, uh, as you can see, I've started a rope here. That these are just gimme bags. But, um, you can make these in whatever kind of. The fuck's wrong with your cat? Um, um <laughs> I'm not too sure. You can you can make these in whatever length, you know. Um, I just like to keep a coil of it going all the time because we've uh, we found that you know shopping lately, man, you get just a ton of these gimme bags here, which are just your you know your little plastic bag. You usually got some high school butthead ringing the cash register, and you just say, yeah, well, double bag, you know, and all of a sudden you're up to your ass and they say, they're just going to a landfill someplace or uh, you know becoming part of an environmental disaster and you pay for them as part of your purchase. You, know, so you might as well use them. What I've got here is just three gimme bags. And you just flatten them out, bottom seam on one end and the handles on the other. And what you're going to do is just take a pair of scissors. You're going to get rid of the bottom seam. And you're going to get rid of the handles. What that's going to leave you with is three large plastic tubes. And what I do with these tubes is I just being careful to keep them a little bit even. So this doesn't have to be pretty. I just take and I cut these big tubes in half to make smaller tubes, so with three bags you get six of these tubes. I'm taking in hand my handy dandy double dog leash thingy, which is one of the tools that I've invented to do this particular job. You can go to any particular door here, any stationary object, secure yourself off. In this case, I'm not going to start a new rope, I'm just going to secure the end of my old rope. On which you can see I have my three little loops there. I'm going to take my new loops, put them through the end of my old loops. Tighten those down so I don't have too huge a knot there. So my loop is just hanging off. Take another loop, another little puppy foot. through. It's fairly stuck. It's too fragile at this stage. So you want to be kind of careful with it. Third little puppy fit. Third loop. Now I have my three strands and I can just begin simple. Three strand every hand flat braid, right over left, left over right. It's going to make me a fairly serviceable piece of rope. You may also notice the new addition to our family. This is Icky. And believe me, he is. Uh, this was Josephine's idea, which is what I get for picking up with somebody who loves humans and small animals. And uh, we 
we've yet to figure out how Icky's going to fit around here. We know that Bandito, basically, our big weasel, wants to kill him, and uh, Coco isn't too sure about him. And he's, as most kittens are, actually a demon in a cat suit. But, uh, you know, we're all going to make it. Anyway, Josephine wanted me to mention today, uh, and I, you know, I think this is a little bit ominous. You know, I'm not big into the fucking Patriot or Insurgent thing or, you know, any of the kind of the aliens or chemtrails are coming to get us and rip chili and you know, that and the other thing. Uh, but there is some genuinely ominous stuff that's going on. And one of the things that was just brought to my attention this morning <laughs> Here at the unemployment offices, they're been beginning to employ armed guards at, uh, at our unemployment offices. Now keep in mind, okay, an unemployment office like, has no cash or valuables on hand. Um, there really ain't nothing to steal. Basically what it is, is uh, for some reason, the government great state of Indiana has decided that there is a potential for difficulty at the local unemployment offices which may require the application of lethal force. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that was, you know, and this is one of the things that kind of you look at it and say, eh, well, it kind of goes right by you. So you start living with a Canadian, at which point, you know, they smack you in the back of the head and say, you may notice but at this point, your government is now arming itself against its own people. Uh, not because any trouble has occurred, but simply because they're expecting trouble to occur. And this is essentially an exercise in intimidation. Um, so it might just be necessary here, you know, with these signs and portents and stuff going on. And then again, I'm not likely to join any kind of a patriot organization or anything else. I have, however, in the past actually been an insurgent, or at least a partisan, and I trained other insurgents and partisans. And uh, so we're going to be doing a little bit of that in our videos from now on. We're setting up some interesting stuff here, just on the level of, you know, survival during difficult times is because we, you know, we're doing all kinds of stuff. We've started you know, making our own smokes. As you can see, we're recycling common everyday materials into a useful purpose. We've got a couple of shelters out here in the woods that, uh, you know, in the event that this place ever was to for some reason become unlivable, we would have some place to go. And we're also making modifications to this place here to include a hot room so that we're uh, going to have the ability this winter to, uh, with wood heat, uh, blow hot air into the house and cut our utility bills. For any of y'all that have been watching me, you may remember there's been a, you know, there's been a general theme of uh, about a year ago I said I was going to make an attempt to get off the grid. Well, we've been fairly successful at that. We're down to one bill. Uh, and our single bill that we pay on a monthly basis is the electric bill. And uh, that's essentially a convenience at this point. You know. Uh, the power was out yesterday due to a huge ass windstorm, and uh, we did the <laughs> we did the non-power thing. <laughs> I have to say I'm not entirely comfortable, you know, with the the baby Jay Zoo and Virgin of Guadalupe candles, you know, suddenly showing up from my uh, darling Josephine because she can't just buy the white kind, you know, they got to have some kind of freaking magical significance. But you know, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, um, I don't claim to be an expert, I don't claim to be a guru, you know, I've been some places, I've done some things, and uh, you guys can watch, not watch, go take a flying leap, you know, the deal is this, is uh, from now on we're going to go ahead and start putting up a few videos, real world, you know, about what it is that we need to be doing. In the event that we are actually looking at some sort of an upheaval where you need to get ready here, because, you know, the longer I look at this YouTube thing, I have more people that don't want to freaking join something or, or you know, buy something or, uh, you know, the bottom line of this whole thing is going to be attitude, you know. 
it's going to be a question of, of what it is you're going to be able to uh, convince yourself to do. Americans are not very good at convincing themselves to do things. So we're going to see if we can give you a little bit of push, maybe show you a couple of things that we do around here. These are only suggestions, like I said, Matt. Um, and uh, there's probably people on here that got all kind of fanciful fucking credentials that are going to, you know, say, oh, well, that's not the right word. Don't do it, you know. Go do something else. I'm just telling you what we do. But in any case, you guys hold tight. You know, everything out here in Indiana is all right. Uh, from me, Josephine, and Icky, the freaking demon cat. Uh, you know, <laughs> don't worry, YouTube, because Indiana's holding. <laughs>